What is up everybody? Welcome to the 100th episode of Visual Effects Artist React. We made it. You heard of Steven Seagal? <laughs> <laughs> you will after this one. We make a case for why the song Green Sleeves should be renamed to Blue Sleeves. Because we're watching The Addams Family and Wednesday where the thing hand guy is in it and he's cool. We're gonna be taking a look at the intro to Severance. This is just Instagram reels. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually one really simple trick that is impossible to replicate in real life. And don't forget guys, I think what could be the most exciting part of this, there is a spinning piece of cardboard that's going to blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true though, it's so true. Also, you have seen the front of the couch a whole lot, but you haven't seen the back of the couch yet, surprise guys. Yeah. <laughs> We've been working on what's back here since the beginning of the show, and I think it's time to finally reveal what's back here. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Keep watching to find out how you can get 10% off therapy today. These are the 10 types of magic. You've probably seen this clip. You guys have probably seen this, right? Yep. Yeah, seen it. Kevin Perry's insane 10 types of magic. It's wonderful, let's just watch it. Levitation. Yep, the effects. Are these actually the 10 types of magic? I think? I base that on nothing. Transformation. He's so good. <sighs> He's a pro. Transposition. That's <laughs> just so fun, man. Penetration. The penetration I feel like I could weirdly do, but I'm sure I'm wrong. How, like, how is it doing that? Yeah, that's crazy. Prediction. Then the last one is- Nice hue shift. He's like, I just hue shifted my shirt. Yeah. Which, and I'm like, come on. Yeah, this is rude. After Alan. all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really huge shift. That's like a very slow hue shift. shift. I'm yeah. sitting here like pulling my hair out, trying to figure out how you do this. And you're like, and I hue shifted my shirt. It's like, ah, come on. <laughs> Some of these you're like, oh, this is like just a magic trick. But, or are they? Does he actually know how to do magic? With Kevin Perry, I'm not sure if he has traditional sleight of hand training. Kevin has done a lot of stop motion work. He did work at Leica Studios. Oh, this is that Kevin. Okay, yeah. cool. I've seen his other stuff around. Have you seen the behind the scenes of his like breakdowns on his channel? Like once you watch those, mm -hmm. it starts to make this make sense. Does, does he do a behind the scenes of this? Not that one, but he does others and it's like, you'll see. Oh, hey, Ren from the future here. Check this out. So since filming this episode, Kevin actually released a behind the scenes look at how he actually did all of these tricks. It's a great video, I recommend you checking it out, but in the meantime, let's see how well these guys are at guessing how Kevin did these tricks. Cause like, is this just Match Cut City? Are we actually just watching some of like the world's best match cuts? Think about a match cut, it's like making something disappear. You want a motion mm -hmm. to sell yes. the eye. So you're thinking almost, yeah, those big motions are so that someone can place something in his hand and paint them out on the side. And yeah, and likewise, he's moving and maybe he's not pixel perfectly in the yeah. same spot, but when it's all in motion, you don't even notice that. He's maintaining the same velocity. He has hands moving a certain speed at the end of one shot. He has the same speed going into the next shot. These are like super basic fundamentals just done extremely well, yeah. <laughs> you know? But it still doesn't explain this first cup gag unless it's just CG. Or stick, paint out. I bet what's happening there is probably is on a stick or something like that. He does this, but the actual animation of it moving is a new element. Yeah, so he it's, stitches, it's, it's uh, real in the scene when he is holding it and lets go, then it's disappeared and replaced, and then it's real again when he grabs it. Another thing that I think really helps with his work is that he is looking at his monitor and his feedback, and he can see like onion layers when you have images stacked on top of each other. You can see how things line up, and just lets you be in the perfect spot. And just a lot of good practice with your body and like how to move consistently. That's the majority of the work is the lineup for that kind of transition work. Also, I think he has to be really careful that the wrinkles at the bottom of his shirt don't get messed up. Hmm. He stands up and sits back down. He's got to put those wrinkles right back to where they are. If you watch those wrinkles over the course of this video, that'll help probably tell us what's happening. In fact, I just saw them wiggle. Left side or right side? Right there, just near his like belly button. Oh, See yeah, there? Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that should pop there. I kind of want to watch it one more time and just watch his face. Cause that would be the hardest thing is like, you can line yourself up, but to match the exact expression, like the musculature. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw right there. It's so small. Yeah, it's so smooth. Like just watching the face, like you'll notice that like, there's like a. Well also like notice he's like, he changes his expression on the beats when the match cuts happen. Like he's not like freezing and then like trying to hold a frozen expression. He's like going like, and look, yeah. you, know? you know, in a way it's like the biggest thing here outside of his shirt changing color is being a big misdirection. I think a lot of the magic is, it's him. It's the magic cuts on him. It's like, he's got these objects in his hands that you're looking at 
And what he's really doing is misdirecting you from noticing any little pops or changes. Because he, as a human being, is there and constantly moving and changing things. And he's doing such a great job of hiding that. What I would love for the behind the scenes to show on this is that he's actually got 266 shirts of various colors. <laughs> <laughs> the whole video was stop motion. Batch cutting his shirts. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be incredible. Uh, this is very, very, very well done. Yeah. Well done, Ken. Incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. It's pretty incredible. Hey guys, we're taking a quick break from React so I could tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, I've done therapy in the past and recently it's become quite difficult to actually find time to go out and actually visit a person in real life. And that's what I love about BetterHelp. For those of you who don't know, BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. But it's something that I've never used before. So I figured it'd be really cool to speak to somebody in-house who is actively using BetterHelp. And that is Griffin. Oh, absolutely, dude. Gosh, it's been like six, seven months now. And it's been really great. What kind of things are you curious about? Because I guess my main concern in switching over is not feeling like it's actual therapy. I guess when you're not in person with somebody, do you feel like you're missing anything? What I've been getting is real therapy. You know, I, I work with someone, uh, she's a professional. It's someone who I can talk to and get advice. Someone who will help me talk through my issues and, you know, sometimes even give me like little homework assignments or, or things to check back in on next week. So I'm getting a lot of the same benefits as in person therapy. In the therapy process, one of the hardest things I found was finding someone who fit me and having to go out in person and meet these people. It's like, what was the process for finding the right therapist for you? Honestly, that was uh, one of the biggest appeals to me. I was kind of going through a lot at that time in my life and I was really, really overwhelmed. And the way BetterHelp does it is you answer some questions and then they actually pair you with someone. You know, you can book a session, you can chat with them. If it's not really a fit, if you don't feel like you're clicking, you can switch to another therapist and just try, you know, try out different therapists and there's no real life limit and you, you know, you're not gonna get like a yeah. penalty or anything like that. That's really awesome. One of the things that I did see about BetterHelp that was very attractive to me is how many therapists they have. They have like 30,000. Um, so I mean, <laughs> based on odds alone, like you've got to find someone. I got matched up with a therapist who's a really good fit for me and has really helped me out a lot over the last six, seven months. Uh, yeah. I'm very grateful for her. How, how often do you meet with her? I meet with her once a week. I also get access to all these like group sessions. Mm -hmm. For the price, it, it's a really good deal, especially when you compare it yeah. to traditional in-person talk therapy. Well, I mean, all the excuses that I've made for not going to in-person therapy appeared to have been addressed here, so I don't think I have many excuses <laughs> left to not give it a shot. And if you guys are also interested in giving it a shot, we have a link down below. It's betterhelp.com slash corridor crew for 10% off your first month. And that is help, better help, H-E-L-P, in case you needed help spelling it. You guys go do that. I'm gonna get some coffee because I'm about to watch some Steven Seagal clips and I feel like I'm gonna need a little boost. Yeah, you might need therapy after that, man. <laughs> All right. It's a miserable night. I know, darling. Children, put down that antenna. Oh, oh yes. It's about time. We're talking about the classic thing. Think of it, thing. This came out in 1991. Tell me how they did it. Oh, simple. A man with a... Man with a green sleeve. Sleeve. Green <laughs> sleeves. Green Th sleeves. There was a song written about this man. <laughs> <laughs> By the Mamushkas. Mamushka! <laughs> yes, every Christmas we, uh, we <laughs> sing <laughs> about how good the VFX in the Adams Family are. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it looks like there's almost some makeup around the wrist there. Yeah. I would imagine they'd almost feed it into like a faux, like his, that's not his yeah. wrist obviously, because you got the top of it. I'm pretty sure it's a hand with like a fake, fake wrist. wrist that pops out and then it's being controlled underneath yeah. it. Blended there, green sleeves out the back. Yeah. <laughs> More, Morticia. Morticia. And then that one's the best one of all. It's just some guy <laughs> reaching over the side. Yeah. Hole, the little the hole, hole in the, in the table. table. So yeah, I think this was done by ILM. Wow. So you are actually looking at digital compositing from like the only company that could do it back then until Mario Brothers freed it for everybody. Changed the game. You just have really nice background replacements because a lot of it is a dude with like a sleeve, right? You know, doing his thing or whatever. Like there, you know, like there's a guy under the table yeah. with his arm sticking into it. And they're, they're selling it, right? They're selling that that's not an arm because they're showing you under the table that there's nobody down there. Uh -huh. Of course, that's just... A basic VFX shot, get a clean plate, drop it in later. Yeah, it looks like they're using the spoon as like the cover of the seam point. It's really clever. And then here there's a, like makeup. Like they actually have like a skirt of wrist yeah. that like goes over the hole. 
in all the shots where it's flying across the floor, we're seeing its beautiful reflections in the lacquered wood. That's actually in the scene, and then this last one is yeah, not hot. in the scene. Yeah. So there, there's a really big issue that happens when you film something separately and you need to put it on a reflective thing like a floor. So you see how the reflection of the hand on the floor, you see how the pinky and the thumb don't actually connect to the pinky and the thumb of the hand? Yeah, totally. And that's because they're just flipping the footage over. But the reflection is actually from an entirely different perspective, and all those points of contact should line up. This is like the bane mm -hmm. of shadows on green screens. Like when you like you, when you film somebody on a green screen, you need to put a shadow on them for like the shot you're comping them into. Getting the shadow to like pin to their feet is just like the same issue with reflections. Yeah. And it's a pain in the butt. So they just said screw it. <laughs> Honestly, whatever. Yeah. yeah, you just screw it, whatever. Yeah. It seems like in a lot of those running shots across the wood, they're framing out the reflection just after the fingertips, which is really yeah. smart. So I want to point something out here. If you go back to the beginning, so like if that was a dude like rolling along his arm would be covering that reflection of the window. But if we go back, right before the hand hits the ground, do we see a reflection of the arm? Oh, there's the arm. Oh, there's the arm. You can see the arm. Jesus Christ. It's the arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. You... Oh, wait, you're oh, right. Oh, yeah, you're right. The, the arm shadow. shadow's in it. The shadow <laughs> of the whole arm. It's amazing what you just don't see after a while. You just give up and just let it be what it is. That's pretty funny. But you're not really thinking about it because the shadows are so steep that your brain just goes, oh yeah, that's like the really long shadow. So apparently they did it even better now. I almost don't even want to look at the one from Wednesday because it's just it's a 3D model. It's going to be CG. I knew it. What? That's No, I'm pretty dang sure this is Mr. Greensleeves. This is Mr. Greensleeves <laughs> himself, yeah. You're right, that's a real hand. They at least got the stump looking a little more modeled. Yeah, the blending is nice too. Consider it done. Blue sleeves. Blue sleeves, turns out it's Blue not green sleeves. sleeves. All right, I'll change the lyrics. <laughs> oh, cool, yeah. so the stump is real. Oh, the stump good. is real. That's well, just awesome. That's what I was saying, yeah, it's like in the, I think even with the previous one, they did that stump prosthetic that pops up. Yeah, actually I really like that they're using a practical hand. It looks wonderful. Why would you ever want a 3D CG hand as a character? Yeah. That'd be chaos. I like that it's not a complete departure from the original thing. I like that it's the same character. You know, you don't feel like, you're like, ah, whatever, we don't care about those old movies. The original film is already impressive. This takes the same techniques and all that and does it actually better. Yeah. And it's an actual improvement. Not to say it was ever bad, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Severance, everyone says this show's great. Oh, this show's the best show. This is my favorite intro. Is this like a mobile game ad? <laughs> Look at these, dude. I know they're like wacky photo scans. Yeah. This is like something up your alley, Jordan. It so is. When I first saw this, knowing this is on the table is like something that they're allowing in these big shows makes me so happy. This is just Instagram reels. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is just VFX artists. This is what my Instagram feed looks like. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a collection of these types of shots all happening, <laughs> looping. Sam, do you know how this came to be? <laughs> what? Ben Stiller was on Instagram. And he saw this guy's reel and he's like, he had this weird animation of like babies coming out of a brain and like turning into jelly. And I thought, this is amazing. So he worked with us over the course of time. And ah! <laughs> <laughs> what, what's his name? Do we have his name? Extra Wegs is uh, his Instagram reel, Oliver Lutz. Yeah, like see this kind of stuff. This, yeah, I have been following this guy for years on Instagram. I love his stuff. Yeah. And when I found it, it was him who made it. I can't even describe the joy. So, you know, these are like kooky photo scans with some like cloth sims on top. But there's, outside the wacky physics sims and the photo scans, there's kind of one other effect at play that makes this visually compelling. Can you guys name it? Can you spot it? Can you figure it out? Orthographic perspective? Boom, Sam got it. Wow, <laughs> what, even, what even hinted you in that direction? <laughs> well, it's not all of the shots. Yeah, yeah, the shots. yeah, this isn't. But a lot of them have it. How would, you, how would you describe orthographic? Orthographic perspective is basically no perspective. Here's the thing, there, there's, there's two versions of reality, okay? There's the way reality is, and then there's the way that we perceive it and look at it with our eyes. So like the stairs back there, okay? To your eyes, they're gonna look smaller than me, but in reality, they're actually larger, and it's only because of the way you're viewing the relationship of space between us that you're getting that sense of scale. But with orthogonal 
perspective, it is a visual way to make sure that the true scale, the true angles, relationship of all objects is how they are based in reality. So basically it eliminates perspective. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So this desk shot's a perfect example. Notice the desks in the foreground are the exact same size as the desks in the background. Yeah. There is no perspective. Yeah. Especially here as the camera starts to level down. Now it looks really weird. Look at the desks in the background. Don't they seem oddly big compared to the desks yeah, in the foreground? Yeah, it's so cool. Oh. It's very trippy because it's subtle, because it looks right to your brain, but it also looks otherworldly. It's essentially a, like an infinite zoom. Yeah, we're basically at really an infinite is, zoom yeah. point. If you ever seen the, like, the spinning window, optical illusion where like the window appears to spin in one direction while like something inside of it spins in the opposite direction. Hmm. This is the first part of a three-part illusion. What do you see? So this is just normal looking. Yeah. Or is it? So which way is it spinning? Left or right? Oh, left? <laughs> <laughs> At a 50-50 chance. This is a good example where it's like you take a camera, you kind of zoom it in so you kind of get the orthogonal look, and then something's drawn to look like it has vanishing point perspective. So it looks like it just wiggles back and forth because that wide edge feels like it's always in front and the yeah. skinny edge feels like it's in back because, you know, vanishing right, points, right. right? But that's not the case at all. It's doing a full 360. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is, it gets really trippy here, especially when I love this. Fast. Yeah. The lighting needs to be really even on both sides to convince you that it Whoa. is. <laughs> Right? <laughs> like, wait a minute! Whoa! Yeah, it's like clipping. It looks like it's clipping, right? It's That's uh, crazy. Uh, you take this, and then you combine this with a bunch of really cool physics sims, and cool mm -hmm. renderings, and cool, like, artsy photo scans, and you throw in, like, the orthogonal perspective, and then you get something really special. So yeah, well done, Oliver. Yes, very, very well done. <laughs> good, good stuff, good Gosh, stuff. Keep going. I thought you said no weapons. No. I said no guns. This is Code of Honor okay. by the esteemed Steven Seagal. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And, you know, Matt and I were currently working on putting Steven Seagal in John Wick. Something no one asked for. <laughs> You're gonna turn him into John Wick? It's we're perfect. gonna put him in the John Wick trailer. It's perfect. I figure why not celebrate this monster <laughs> with, with some clips and uh, just, just play it, man. Oh, I mean, great. It, it speaks for itself. Oh my gosh. Yes. Wow. Oh, wow. it's there. Wait, wait, go back. Yeah, run that back. Did I get the, did it, was there a classic X? Was there a classic blood X? <laughs> this guy doesn't miss, man. Oh my gosh. This guy yeah. doesn't miss. Right in your face, just like that bullet. Wow. <laughs> They're just like dragging it out of their folder. <laughs> and, and, and No, they don't even bring it into their project bin. They drag it directly <laughs> onto the screen, right in Premiere, <laughs> and it like loads it and just figures it out. They're like, cool. That exit wound is quite special. Isn't it? Everything about it. Yeah. The color. It's delightful. It's like a lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> and the, for one frame, they bulged his face. Weird. It's just like they bulge it out instead of having the cheek, the whole skull expands. <laughs> I mean, actually, that's not a terrible idea, I guess, if you're doing that. <laughs> you got to give it some impact, right? Like, yeah. it's actually the one touch of artistry in here. This compared to, like, the Dread stuff we looked at. <laughs> well, I mean, compared to Judge yeah. Dread or, like, District yeah. 9. But this yeah. is more like Judge <laughs> Dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> this movie, based on my understanding, is he's like a vigilante. He's taking down the druggies, but he's quite literally just killing people who are using drugs. Oh no! <laughs> a nut, nut shot. shot. Oh, no. and, and, and he gets electrocuted. Himself. That electricity. Nut oh, shot. So, oh, he's, he's exes. Wait, he's wait. Exes. He's like RoboCop. Oh You're just my gosh. tearing him up, dude. But wait, she's, she's still smoking crack? He's just smoking With blood crack. on her. Run it back, run it what back. What is this scene? He just killed these people. He just murdered people. Also, you can totally, if you go back, you can totally tell that they're darkening the end of the gun because it's an airsoft gun. Oh yeah, oh, you're right. Yeah. Well, no, look at, so there's the inner barrel of an airsoft gun. I'm gonna point this gun at the camera, I apologize. Don't Trigger be afraid, warning. everyone. There's like the facade barrel on an airsoft rifle. But then there's an actual inner barrel that's being used to actually, you know, propel the BBs. And they're tracking a black dot. That black dot is covering up the airsoft inner barrel. That's super funny. Because, <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't even, like, color match, like, the haze. They're yeah, like, just like, black they're like, hole. Black. <laughs> it just, it blows my mind, though, that logically, he doesn't kill the one person doing crack. There's one person actually doing drugs. <laughs> She's the one who gets left. 
Let me ask you this question. <laughs> You're on a rooftop. Oh, gosh. You're in danger. Oh, no. How do you escape? What's a cool way to get out of there? Slide down a rope. Slide shoot, down a rope. Shoot a hole through the ceiling. Okay. What about this? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? He just what? rolls into the glass. I just huck myself. <laughs> Wow. Is that a stun? Did they just drop? Did no, I don't think a guy, I don't, he would have bounced harder. I think that's a VFX. Yeah, I think he jumps yeah. up and lands sideways and they just stitch it. Yeah, with, yeah, 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 yeah. Gosh, I just couldn't think of like a less graceful way to, <laughs> to do that. I thought Steven Seagal didn't run from fights. <laughs> and just in time, our heroes arrive. <laughs> Wait, I'm just like a bunch of, oh, oh my gosh. Blah, 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 blah. Standing oh. in the helicopter. Dude. Standing in the helicopter with like light Standing. glow wrap around them from no source. Oh like no. Like the guy on the right. It, oh <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It just hurts to look at. Oh, wait, did they film them like in another area for a different scene and then just were like, no, <laughs> now they're in the helicopter. Just pull them, maybe, I wonder. I think that's why the comp is so bad. It's because they weren't on a blue screen it's or a green screen. not a green screen whatsoever. That's Roto Brush. I it's... bit my life on it. Yeah. Oh my God. It's a special breed, isn't it? That's rough. I feel like you can find the shot in the movie somewhere else. <sighs> It's just special. So I want to share that with you guys. Oh, you thanks. Know, we've been diving down the well of Steven Seagal and we're fully consumed at this point. John Thick. John, John Thick comes out tomorrow on Check this it channel. Out. Subscribe <laughs> slash come back. If you're on a computer, just leave this window open. Just leave this tab open <laughs> until tomorrow. Yes. As a reminder. Oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> guys, guys, I think it's time. I think it's time. Are you ready to see this? Come on, come on, let's check this out. All right, let's do it. So ever since we started the show, Every single guest we've had, we've had them sign the back of the couch. We got our names on it too. <laughs> yeah, we actually, we got me. <laughs> I mean, is this you, Sam? No, <laughs> I don't think I've signed this. Wait, oh, you haven't? You haven't signed you haven't? the couch? No. What? Well, <laughs> That's right, it. Sam is gonna Wait, sign for real? it. So you guys are witnessing Sam sign the couch on the 100th episode. There it is, baby. That's it, that's the signature. Immortalized. The very first episode, when you filmed this, it was you and Ren and Clint and then Carmichael. It was the idea just to kind of to like talk about how weird Sonic looked. And it was yeah. like, it was, it, was, it was completely off the cuff. It's crazy to have these people who like, you know, I've always seen as being these, these kings on top of these mountains, just be like, yeah, I like nerding out about visual effects. And you guys like nerding out about visual effects. Let's do it. We've had a lot of animators on the show, and a byproduct of that is that you get really cool drawings, like Patrick Osborne, who drew the dog from Feast. You got Mushu the Dragon from Tom Bancroft, and Pumbaa from Tony Bancroft, like from the hands of the artists themselves. Yeah, that's actually really special. It's really pretty cool. Captain Disillusion's intern. <laughs> <laughs> all of these VFX supervisors yeah. from all these different VFX studios who are like, you know what, you seem cool enough, we'll come and visit you guys to share the couch with you, and it's like, Really cool. It's pretty cool. I want to say thank you to some of the guests that helped us kick off some of these genres of shows. I mean, every single guest. You have been amazing to have on the show. All of you viewers, it's been amazing to have you watching and learning with us. Also, thank you to all of you website subscribers for watching through all of this stuff. You help really make a lot of this stuff move. Now, this back of the couch reveal, it's special for YouTube, but people on the website, they already knew. They saw the back of the couch in the actual title header of the category for extended react. If you like this show, subscribe on CorridorDigital.com because you get to watch half hour episodes. We got all the videos ad free, apps on the phone, smart TV apps you can just watch on your TV. We got merch discounts, we got exclusive shows. It's $3.99 a month. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it, I'm done.